Well, I hope everybody has had a great week. It, it's certainly been a beautiful week. Uh, we've had a lot of sunshine this week and, and not nearly as much rain as we seem to have gotten uh, in the last several weeks. And so it, it's been great. It's been great. And as I said, it's, it's always good now that college football has started because I've got my, my games, my favorite teams, got figured out what time they're playing tomorrow and on what channel they're playing. And I've kind of got my other business activities. I've got, got everything organized because uh, Saturday is a big day in my household. And I do love watching college football. And I dare say that based on comments that most of you do also. The, uh, the lesson today, we're going to continue to, to journey through the book of Exodus. And as I mentioned, I guess, two weeks ago and also last week, I think it's very important as we look at Exodus, as we study Exodus, that we realize that it is a true story. These events really happened. Uh, and sometimes I think we, we read things and, and there's little images in our mind or we've seen pictures or, or maybe seen something in a movie, but everything that's described in, in, in our lessons are real. These people were experiencing everything that we're talking about. And, and I think because of that, it's so important, and I, I mentioned this many times, that I think it's so important to picture yourself in the story. How would you have reacted? It's one thing to read something that happened thousands of years ago to somebody else, but if you were there, how would you react? And I'm going to be suggesting here in a little bit that maybe these stories aren't so old, maybe this history is not so old, because many of these things are happening to us today and, and, and happening in our lives. The, the lesson comes from our quarterly. It's titled The Redeemer's Provision. It comes from Exodus 17. And the purpose statement is to appreciate God's means of provision in times of dire need. And that's a great, great theme. It's a theme that we talk about a lot. We talk about it. We certainly have Old Testament uh, references. We have New Testament because people do have needs. And, 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 at, and at a very almost superficial level, we say, well, God will provide, so don't worry about it. But it's so important to look at these, these lessons because when you're in the middle of a storm, it's tough sometimes to, to keep faith and to understand that, yes, God will provide. And that's what we're going to read here in our story today. I also want you to think about, as we, we, we get into this story, that we're all at different places on our faith journey. And, and as we reflect on where we are in the story, I think it's important to reflect on where you are, where we are, where I am in our faith journey. And, and I had this conversation with somebody this week. And they were saying, well, that's an interesting thing. You use the term faith journey. And I said, yeah, and here's the thing. We're all on a faith journey. There are some people who don't even realize they're on a faith journey, but God is pursuing them. God is walking beside them. They just may not recognize it yet. So let's look at our lesson today. It's from Exodus 17. And we read, the whole Israelite community broke camp and set out from the sin desert to continue their journey, as the Lord had commanded they set up their camp at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people argued with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why are you arguing with me? Why are you testing the Lord? But the people were very thirsty for water, and they complained to Moses, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us, our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What should I do with this people? They are getting ready to stone me. Now let's stop a second before we read on, and let's remember that last week, and, and I hope you remember our trivia question that was in last week's lesson, last week we talked about the people rejoicing, the people were celebrating and singing the first song that we have recorded in the Bible, the Song of Moses and the Song of Miriam, celebrating the fact that the, the sea was parted and they escaped Pharaoh and his army. And they were celebrating. Now here we are, shortly thereafter, they're continuing their journey, they're continuing to do what God asked them to do, and now they're in the desert and they don't have water and they're complaining. Now to be fair, and I think we've got to be fair, we know that you can live for a couple of weeks without food. It might not be a happy couple of weeks, but you can live without food. You can't live more than a couple of days without water. And so it's very real. I mean, I, I get it. I understand. I, I understand that, wait a minute, we're, we're now traveling through this desert. There's no water. We're being led there. 
we're trying to do what we're supposed to do, but we're going to die. Is that why we're here? And so I get it, and I think it's important to remember that. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of Israel's elders with you. Take in your hand the shepherd's rod that you used to strike the Nile River and go. I'll be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Hit the rock, water will come out of it, and the people will be able to drink. Moses did so while Israel's elders watched. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites argued with and tested the Lord, asking, Is the Lord actually with us or not? Then we go on to read that Amalek came and fought with Israel at, at Rephubim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some men for us and go fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I'll stand on top of the hill with the shepherd's rod, and God of, rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He fought with Amalek while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel would start winning the battle. Whenever Moses lowered his hand, Amalek would start winning. But Moses' hands grew tired, so they took a stone and put it under Moses so he could sit down on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on each side of him, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a reminder on the scroll and read it to Joshua. I will completely wipe out the memory of Amalek under the sky. And Moses built an altar there and called it, The Lord is my banner. And he said, The power of the Lord's banner. The Lord is at war with Amalek in every generation. Now, many of these, these images, many of these things we read in this story, we've read them before. I mean, they're not unfamiliar to us. But I think if we go back to that, that premise that I, I was sharing a few minutes ago, we're all on a faith journey. We're all at different places on that faith journey, and how does this lesson, how does this story, how does this history fit with us? And I dare say that you're going to start thinking that many of these things these people were experiencing, we certainly experience today. First of all, they started out in the Sinai Desert, the Sin Desert. And they started out, and they were commanded by God to go on a journey. Now let's stop a second and think about your faith journey. Do you feel that God is commanding you on your journey? And, and how many times on that journey, even though you may believe that, even though you may understand that, how many times on that journey do you, do you get discouraged? Does something happen that you say, wait a minute, make it stop, make it go away. I don't want to be on this trip. And yet we know that it's God that's leading us. And look at Moses. Moses, and you remember the story about Moses, and he, he five times he, he, he asked the Lord, he said, I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be a leader. I don't speak well. I'm not a good leader. I, I'm not the person you want. And God said, no, you are. I'm going to make you the person you need to be. And so Moses became an obedient leader. And I think about in our lives how many times we, we've said no to something. We've had something that we've been asked to do, or there's been something, and we kind of felt like, well, maybe we'd like to get involved, but I'm just not good enough. And I think about Moses. I think about God calling each and every one of us to do certain things in his kingdom. And, and, and when we're obedient to God, how, when we look back, we see the victories that were won. Rephidim was a wilderness. And I think about the many times on our journey on our faith journey, that we've found ourselves in the wilderness. We've found ourselves in a situation we didn't think we could get out of. we found ourselves in some uncomfortable circumstance. And we thought, what are we going to do? And then as we look back on our life, we, if we prayed about it at the time, we realized that God answered those prayers. Horeb was a wilderness. And I think about it in my own life, and I, I have been, I've shared this before, I've, I've been spending a lot more time thinking about my life and the people that I've encountered in my life and the experiences I've had in my life. And I've learned a lot of lessons, a lot of lessons that I learned when I was in the wilderness. God is going to provide for us in, in, in our story today. He provides water. Think about the times in your life when you were in the wilderness, when you were in a challenging situation. 
where we found ourselves in need, in dire need. We were thirsty. We wanted water. We, wanted, we knew we wanted something. And we needed it now. And God provided. Many of the commentaries I wrote said that if we think about Jesus, and this was a foretelling of Jesus to come, that Jesus is the rock that we build our lives on. That rock that will provide water, living water, to each and every one of us. We see symbolism here in this story about the rod and the staff, and the rod is representative of God's power. God's power, His majesty, His authority. And how do we on a daily basis, as we walk this faith journey, how many, how many ways do we see God's power? How many ways can we see God's majesty if we take time to stop and look? What symbols do we see today that remind us of how awesome God is? We certainly, and I, I've shared this before, I've got a lot of friends on social media, a lot of friends on Facebook. And, and they post the sunrise in the morning. They, 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 they live in, in, in more rural areas or maybe at a beach. They post sunrises in the morning and sunsets at night. And that alone is God painting this, this image of his glory, of his power. The staff represents suffering, but it also represents all that is kind. It's, it's interesting, and I may have shared this before, when you think about the shepherd's staff, when you think about the crook, it, it was a very important tool. I, I, I know some of you know that I raised sheep. It was my 4-H my project for several years when I was in high school. Sheep don't have any way to protect themselves. They've got one set of teeth. They don't have, have teeth on the, the lower part of their mouth. They, if if a, something attacks a sheep, they can't bite and fight for themselves. They're, they're, they don't run all that fast. They typically follow. And so the shepherd needed this, this staff with the crook on it, and he used it to defend the sheep from harm. He also used it in a very gentle way to help guide the sheep, to guide them through a gate, guide them around the pasture. And so, in one sense, it was protection. In another sense, it gave comfort. It gave guidance. And we need that in our lives. And then I think about Massa, I think about Meribah, where we put God to the test. We put God to the test in our lives. Have you ever, like these people, said, God, show me what I need to do. If you really are out there, if you're really listening to me, if you're really listening to my prayers, this is what I want right now. This is what I expect to happen in my life tomorrow. But then what happens? What happens tomorrow? We shouldn't be putting God to the test. We want to argue with God. We've done that. The Psalms are filled with with laments, saying, what am I going to do? Help me out here. I, 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 you're, not, you, you're not listening to me. But then the Psalms come back to praising God for the ways that He has blessed each and every one of us. We've all had Amaleks in our life. The, the, the Amalekites were people that they were rock-solid enemies, staunch enemies of the Israelites. And they had to be defeated. They had to be stopped. And I look at our lives, I look at people that we're at conflict with, we're having challenges with, and how do we reconcile with those people? How do we, how do we deal with those people that are, that are attacking us, that are making our lives miserable? And I think about, about how we reconcile with our enemies through love and forgiveness which Jesus taught. And I think about God giving us the strength to do that. And then the last character in this story, the last thing I want you to think about was Joshua. He was, he was the chief warrior. He was the hand that went out and defeated Amalekah, or Amalek. And and I think about that. God gave him the power. I, I think about Moses. And, and, I, and I, I've not read many references to why Moses got tired, why he couldn't keep 
his arms up, why he needed help, but then I also think about we all are there. We all need help. We need to support each other. Joshua did what Moses instructed him to do. What Moses instructed him to do was what God told him to do. He called him to go out and lead the battle. And he did. How many battles do we have today? I, I've said this many times. I've, I've probably had half a dozen conversations with people this week, and it's interesting to me. I'm at a point in my life where I'm... I've always been somebody that can talk to people. I've always been somebody that can open up a conversation, even to a total stranger. And that's, that's just a, a gift, I guess, that I've, I've been given. But it's interesting to me when I take the opportunity, and it may be just a very casual conversation, something as simple as somebody, I say hi to somebody, they say hi back, and I'll say something like, I hope you have a great day, and they say, well, we hope you do too, and I'll respond with, when the Lord gave me another day, I said, I'm going to make it a great one. And you'd be surprised the number of people that respond to that. It opens up a whole conversation. People want to talk about their faith. They want to talk about the, the, the things that are bothering them. They want to be able to share with other people, whether it be at the post office, a grocery store, on the street, wherever it is. I had an interesting conversation. We had uh, somebody that was working for us at the house. And I made a comment like that and ended up in a 20-minute conversation and he shared his life story with me. And he was wanting to talk about it. We want to tell our story if we're just given the opportunity. And part of that is helping fight the battle to get the word out about the love of Christ. It's an interesting lesson. It's an interesting lesson and as I say, sometimes we read things like this and then we just kind of gloss over them and say, yeah, I remember the story. But we're living that story. We're living everything that's in our lesson today on a daily basis. Will you pray with me, my friends? And I'm going to read the prayer from our quarterly. God of the rod and the staff, you comfort and lead us. As we make the bold choice every day to choose your way, let us know that your presence is constantly with us. May we leave behind our worldly masters and all who would oppress us and follow you exclusively. And as we go throughout this week, we continue to ask that you keep our eyes open. Our eyes open to those things you want us to see and our ears open to the things you want us to hear. And our hearts overflowing with that love that you want us to share with everyone. In his name we pray. Amen. I love you, my friends, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.